a fire in the midst of the sea. The summit of a sea mount erupts above the waves, its new lava claiming a place in the sun. Steadfast against the ocean, new land consolidates. An island is born. In the very midst of the vast Pacific, an uncharted world awaits discovery. A potential paradise, but only for those that can overcome the barrier of its isolation. In time, they came, by air and sea, filtering over the ocean, the few whose progeny have filled this chance land. Islanders now found nowhere else, a rich diversity of life, each kind a product of seclusion that has inherited this paradise and is at risk only from strangers. There's ice in Hawaii, but only at great height. The cinder cone of Mauna Kea is the peak of a mountain twice the height of Everest, but that's measuring from the bed of the Pacific from which the volcano sprang some 10 million years ago. The cone is an island within an island. What could possibly live amid barren cinder and snow fields under a blistering tropical sun? answer, the Wekiu bug. It's lost its ability to fly, but its long walks over the ice are helped by having an antifreeze chemical in its blood. That also helps it survive the bitter cold up here at night. Wekiu bugs thrive here, even breed here. But why did they come here to where nothing seems to grow? Their ancestors and relatives are all sapsuckers living on leaves in the forest further down the mountain. There would seem to be little for a sapsucker to sink its proboscis into here. But there are strong winds on Mona Kea, and a good many insects get blown up here from below. Ancestral Wekiu bugs probably came that way. Here and there, a litter of wind drift sticks to the snow, and it's mostly dead and dying insects good scavenging if an off-course ancestral Wekiu bug was to survive. But to feed on it, the bug had to cease being vegetarian, and that seems to be what happened. Fresh food is always on tap in the freezer. Piercing a ladybird is not that different from piercing plant tissue, and the fluids within are more nourishing than sap. The Wekiu bugs are constantly showered in windfalls fresh from the forests down the mountain. And the Wekiu's have it all to themselves up here. As yet, nothing else cashes in on this debris. Their ancestors were able to seize an opportunity. They changed their behavior to survive. In this bleak, isolated place, the high-protein diet was vital, and the Wekiu's made this their home. Volcanic islands, such as Hawaii, were lands of opportunity for plants and animals that somehow managed to arrive. Relatively few kinds made the journey, but once here, each could explore new places, new lifestyles. Generation after generation slowly adapted to new situations, new advantages, new constraints. And this is still a factory floor where the process is evolution and the selected products are new species and new behavior. 
Forests grew from seeds, washed or carried to these shores, and a number of insects were ferried or blown here. But there were very few predators from the continents, no ants and not many spiders. So opportunity makes a thief out of unlikely material. A caterpillar that takes other animals. Carnivorous caterpillars flourish on Hawaii. Their deadly pounce triggered by contact with bristles on their backs. Their strong grip is able to clasp surprisingly large victims. Hawaii's insects and spiders are on the hit list of some 18 kinds of predatory caterpillar. The ambush is as deadly as that of any ant or spider, and in the absence of their competition, these caterpillars have adopted the role superbly. Perhaps an ancestor living among flowers, rather like this pollen-feeding caterpillar, took that one small step to attacking and eating a different high-protein diet, and made a giant leap for caterpillar kind. On another island group, over a thousand miles to the west, the reverse has been the case. A reptilian hunter has opted for the soft life, eating leaves and fruit. Found only on these Solomon Islands is the largest skink in the world, the giant prehensile tailed skink. No other skink has a flexible tail. It can be used to hang onto branches, just like a monkey's tail. And that's no coincidence. In the absence of monkeys or any large mammal on the Solomons, the skink has occupied their place or niche in the forest. Without competition and with few predators, it's evolved to the size of a small monkey, though it's not quite as agile among the branches. No large, fierce mammals reached these small Indonesian islands naturally either. There are no tigers here, but that being the case, an inhabitant of another kind found the way open to become like one. In ages past, sizable monitor lizards landed by chance on these shores. Today, they are dragons. Twelve feet of giant reptile. The largest lizard in the world. A shadow of another age. It isn't man-eating or fire-breathing, but is a fearsome hunter. It is the Komodo dragon. It may not be able to see very well, but it smells everything acutely. The flickering tongue tastes the air for carrion or potential prey. As do the dragons of mythology, these giants must seek the shelter of caves, riverbank burrows that cool the reptile's body. The dragon would overheat in the midday sun. Caves here are home to a couple of kinds of fruit bat. These are blossom bats, smaller and more delicate than the heavier fruit bats. Their droppings build up guano on the floor, where the mixture of 